wondering, it's also here, Ari, also as a thing in research group to get the screen sharing on my laptop. Seems to be a pain to get the WebEx sign out. Okay, so um, you hear me? Loud and clear, I hope. Yep. Yeah, good. Uh, so uh, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, second virtual interim of the ASDF working group. And um, uh, we have uh, 90 minutes today. Uh, and uh, let's just go start here and go through our slides. Um, so uh, since this is an official IETF meeting, uh, here is the note well in the short form. You will be recorded. And as I say that, I will. Yes, you have been recorded already because it apparently started when I started the meeting. Uh, so uh, you are recorded. Uh, so um, as always, of course, be nice, be professional. And uh, that the IPR guidelines of the IETF uh, apply. There is a link to them there. And um, the repo for our uh, uh, working group material is uh, at the Git on GitHub. And there is also a link to the code EMD for this uh, meeting. Uh, Michael, can you take some notes? Michael Richardson, can you take some yes, notes? I've, I've started. Thank you. So I still really haven't figured out the best way to split my screen here among things. So here is the full note well. Uh, this is in the slides if you want to read it. Uh, this is in particular if you haven't been to an ITF meeting before. But it's good to know. Um, uh, with that, we continue. Uh, here is the agenda for today. First of all, introduction, uh, some meeting logistics and agenda bashing. We will give you a brief update of where we are uh, as the working group, as a working group, and then we will uh, have two main topics today. One is on SDF, uh, SDF one one, wrapping that up, uh, trying to get the finalized specification, and the um, uh, second uh, major topic is uh, W3C Web of Things. And I was hoping that Sebastian would be joining us here. Uh, he acknowledged before that he could, so let's uh, let's just hope that he's late. And uh, that's why also we have a, a group of people from the W3C uh, working group, uh, whoever thinks, uh, to talk with here. And and uh, they have a uh, so Sebastian will show a demo, and we will also talk a bit about how we can collaborate collaborate going forward. Um, so with that, is there any other business that people want to raise here in the call? Hearing none. Good. Who's logged in as Thing to Thing Research Group? Sorry. That would be me, Ari. Ari, but you're, oh, you're logged in twice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So as I suggested, oh, Hi, this is Kaz from W3C. As yeah. I suggested on the mailing list or the W3C side, uh, yeah, at some point, maybe not today. So we would like to talk about uh, the concrete uh, process and uh, content for the radon procedure. But uh, let's see the Sebastian's description and the demonstration first. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, I think the, we need to um, sit down there and, and discuss uh, and, and think a bit about if things need to, how, how far things need to be formalized for us to collaborate uh, or yeah. if we can do it. Uh, I, mean, I think as a light process as possible, hopefully. But uh, let, let's, uh, so I think we will have, if things work out, we will have time at the end to at least touch upon this topic and, and, and start with it. Right. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. That. Um, so moving along, uh, yeah, we covered this already. There's the, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, now on slide six, uh, the status update for the working group, uh, we were chartered in October, as I hope all of you know, uh, it's myself, Nicholas and Michael Richardson, who are chair this group and, uh, progress so far. 
uh, we have had um, uh, three meetings, one unofficial hallway meeting um, where there, there's a link there to a tutorial. And that link is also in the in the uh, agenda for this meeting. Uh, then we had the first virtual interim um, uh, before the ITF 109, where we adopted the SDF 10 draft. Uh, we had uh, both a full week hackathon, very intense, uh, with a uh, plus uh, actual meeting at ITF 109 to further work on SDF 11, and uh, we are getting close to completing that. So the keep uh, the main. Uh, purpose of this meeting today here is to actually try to wrap up one one and, and see where we are and identify the missing pieces uh, if there are things we need to uh, have some kind of more uh, uh, figure out the, the consensus bits here that we all agree yep um, some uh, general working group procedures you've seen this before we uh, any decisions we take them to the mailing list for confirmation. Uh, the actual work is done on GitHub. Uh, there is a link there to the to the uh, repo, and we try to use the issue tracker for issues. And uh, so when you see numbers coming up in the in the coming pages, they re refer to issues in the issue tracker for SDF. And uh, we, uh, in addition to the uh, <laughs> the virtual physical meetings. Uh, we also run virtual interims between the um, uh, on an irregular basis, uh, but we try to do doodles to figure out a good time. The reason why this time here is was chosen is because it overlaps with uh, the um, the time that the one data model usually meets. And uh, the final point here, which is a bit relevant today, is that one of the ways of working here where we uh, have, have in the ASTF group is that we try to identify reasonably stable drafts as implementation drafts. And so this, uh, what we're aiming for today with 1.1 one, one is one of those implementation drafts that we can, uh, that will hopefully be reasonably stable, even if we're not at final RFC uh, stage. Mm -hmm. Moving along. Um, this is, uh, I will just spend one minute on this or 30 seconds on this. I guess everybody has seen it. This is about the one data model where a lot of the parts of the ASDF and SDF comes from. The problem was that there were several standardized IoT data models and that led to high cost of system integration. Various solutions were tried out to, to sort of um, offset this problem. Uh, it ended up that there's a uh, tool that could translate between the different formats that so as neutral had a lot of uh, positive uh, uh, aspects to it that was 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 it what what was uh, developed this led to um, the definition of the semantic definition format which is now in itf and a big topic of the ASTF working group it also led to other work that remained in the one data mail group around tool chains and also on adopting actual specified device models for, for wider reuse. So there is a link there to 1DM, which you haven't seen it before. Yes. Um, so uh, we had this slide also at the, um, at the uh, 109 meeting. Um, we, uh, it's clear that the value of ASDF increases with the increased adoption uh, of SDF by organizations that are using IoT data models. So we tried to reach out to other groups and, and bring them into the ISDF compatibility fold. And um, uh, so far, of course, we're talking with the 1DM, but we've also been talking to the uh, DMSE folks in like OMA Specworks. We have, uh, this is part of an ISO IEC, JDC1, SC41 um, uh, contribution uh, that was recently submitted and up for voting. And um, now, uh, as of today, we hope to uh, have a look at uh, Web of Things. And uh, so now, of course, we've invited the Web of Things folks to our turf here. And uh, I guess we will be happy to go there to them as well and present this work. So uh, this was a general call out to everyone that if you work with IoT data models, please talk to us. And uh, because we, uh, 
we we see that we could definitely do with a bit more external input, external uh, insights, and so on. Uh, so that would be really good. Yep. Uh, any questions on the previous material or intro or general questions around ASDF before we start on the on the more crunchy topic of SDF one one? I would um, I just add to what you said. Um, there was quite a bit of external input uh, into one data model last year, and we had folks from uh, OMA and uh, Lightweight MTM and OCF and Zigbee organization and Bluetooth SIG and a couple of other vertical integrator type uh, uh, solutions like SunSpec for uh, off-grid solar energy systems and this sort of thing. So the requirements we collected were really pretty broad. Um, but uh, what, what, what sort of is happening is that we need to finish the language before we can get the, the, we need to finish SDF and get it to a stable point before we can ask these folks to come back and start contributing um, models from these this this broader organization. So in the in the broader framing of things, what we're what we're trying to do is get an initial version of this that uh, nailed down that's stable, that people can say, oh look, it's an IETF spec, it's stable, it's an RFC. Um, Yes, it's in development. There's going to be another version, just like everything else. But here's something that we can invest in and we can sort of commit to. So that's kind of what we're we're looking for. Um, there's not a super immediate time frame, but we'd like to get it, um, you know, uh, get people engaged before they they all go off and come up with some other solution. <laughs> So we're, you know, some of these folks are sort of waiting in the wings that have provided a lot of input into um, where we are now. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that, that's a very good point. Uh, and uh, maybe one thing to do here is as well that we should try to from uh, reach out to the um, in the other groups that were early participants of the one DM. Uh, maybe not the the full set, but if there are sort of more. Um, which is a technically people who might have opinion. I, I know we have a good coverage already in one DM and in, in ASDF and that that group. But if there are more technically inclined people who want to, who uh, like from Bluetooth or so, uh, that would be really good to have here as well. Um, but uh, any any leads uh, with regards to this, please let us know when we will we will uh, follow up on them. Good. Uh, thank you. So, uh, without further ado, I think uh, it's uh, Karsten. Uh, I can drive the slides here, but are you ready to to present your stuff? I hope so. Can you hear me? Yes. Please go ahead. Okay. I, before I go into the slides that I have, uh, I would like to to make one one comment on what Michael just said. Um, we have a little bit of. Uh, dissonance here or perception problem or however I want to call it um, because stable and RFC are not necessarily the same uh, categories. Uh, so for instance, the, the quick people and also the, the HTTP2 and HTTP3 uh, people have uh, uh, created a, a style of working where they have stable specifications, implementation specifications, uh, which they call them. And uh, they, they went to uh, a dozen or so of them, or 30 internet drafts, uh, before they, they finally went for RFC. And the RFC isn't out there, and, and still most of, of the, uh, much of the traffic in, in the internet uh, has moved to one of these uh, specifications already. Um, so um, th th that was the model that we had in mind uh, when we said we want to have stable implementation drafts and, and SDF 1.1 actually is intended as, as one such uh, stable implementation uh, draft. So this is where we want to, to go to. And we, we knew that 1.0 had a few construction sites. And the idea is to, to have something with 1.1 that uh, isn't cast in concrete. Uh, but that 
uh, there has to be a really good reason to to change it. Uh, yeah, so we hope we don't need to change it, but uh, you never know. You learn a lot uh, while, while doing these things. So that's why it's really important that we get SDF 1.1 uh, right. Uh, but we also shouldn't wait indefinitely for it because we, we have been working with 1.0 for almost half a year now. Um, and uh, it's time to, to fix those uh, gaps, to fix those holes and, and close those gaps. Um, so this is really what we're trying to do here. Comments on that? Okay, so slide 11, please. Yeah, so um, the, the objective is to, to uh, agree on this this year. Oh, type on the slide, using knowledge gained from using 1.0, of course. <laughs> and uh, the idea was to create uh, GitHub issues and uh, uh, work on them in the GitHub style of, of doing things and create pull requests uh, and, and so on and so on. And uh, the the assumption is that at some point we will have a document where uh, at least the authors believe this is now 1.1 ready. And then we do something like a work group last call, not a work group last call for publication as an RFC, but, but for publication as the draft for, for SDF 1.1 and uh, publish that internet draft once the last call is done and the NITs have been taken care of um, as an implementation uh, draft. So the, the internet draft would say this is uh, an implementation draft. Next slide. So uh, we, we had uh, six uh, GitHub issues. I forget what happened to GitHub issue number one. I can't find that. Um, so we have uh, two to, to seven. Um, and uh, issue number three was really about something that, that was in uh, SDF 1.0, but we hadn't really tested yet. And that, that tested testing has been done. And we now know how to do reuse and reference. Uh, naming, and we also clarified the naming convention, which is a little bit different from uh, how things are usually done in the, the RDF world. So that, that's maybe something that, that people should be looking at again and see whether they, they like that. I mean, it's a convention, so it's easier to change a convention um, uh, than, than changing a hard part of, of the spec. But still, we, we shouldn't have to change that convention should agree on it. So that's number three. Number four was about the introduction of composite uh, types. And uh, uh, we essentially agreed to reuse uh, the, the related feature of JSON schema org. So um, what, what I didn't make a slide of uh, slide for is uh, uh, SDF is a, a data and interaction modeling language. And because it's uh, not very bright to completely reinvent a new uh, data modeling language, uh, we decided to, to reuse uh, uh, as much as possible from the JSON schema org specification, which unfortunately is not completed. Uh, but there are some parts that most people would agree are, are unlikely to change at this point. So we can easily import them. We import them by actually describing what, what they mean. And um, so we, we looked at uh, type objects required and, and properties. These are three qualities uh, we, we take from JSON schema org. We have a little bit of a terminology problem here uh, because uh, JSON schema org calls JSON members properties, uh, but we also have properties in SDF. Uh, these are the, the uh, interaction affordances that allow you to uh, read and write uh, uh, values. Uh, so we, we are sometimes getting a little bit confused and we are calling those members in the specification qualities. Now, of course, there are also members in the data types that we are talking about. So it, it can get a bit confusing here. 
anyway, that's what you get for for uh, from importing something else, but reinventing things is, is uh, wouldn't have been very bright either. Um, so uh, we decided to simply reuse that syntax and also use it for the input and output types of actions and events. Now uh, there was uh, some some observation. There were some observations that this is a little bit noisy, a little bit redundant. Um, but uh, um, well, you convinced me, and, and uh, I think we convinced Michael Costa later on. Uh, so I think we now have at least rough consensus that this is the uh, uh, way we should be going. Uh, so these issues, number three and number four, have been closed by, by their respective originator. And uh, there is text in the current draft. And uh, yeah, one of the questions that we will have to answer in, in the consensus call, as Michael Richardson pointed out, the last call should be called um, one of the questions will be, um, are number three and number four really properly addressed now? So, um, are there any comments on number three and number four? Car Karsten, a quick, quick question here. Unfortunately, yes. I haven't had a chance to follow this as close as I want. Is do we have examples of the number four uh, in the GitHub? They are currently in the um, exploratory repository, and uh, uh, since we now have uh, 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 at least some some basic uh, CI support for uh, SDF one point one. Uh, people might want to move the playground stuff to to the structure as well. Mm. So the, 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 the interesting observation is that we added composite types, but we also moved the input and output types of actions and events from, from a rather ad hoc scheme that we had in 1.0 to this new stuff. So it's not just an addition that, that doesn't uh, uh, touch uh, any existing specification. It actually means a little bit of busy work for, for everyone uh, to update their, their generators. But the, the effect is that we have a single mechanism for composite types and, and much less mechanism than we had before. Well, the good news about that is that the scope and impact of this changes uh, only a very few models because we didn't really have a a pat there are a lot of models waiting for this pattern to be to be put in there. So there aren't really a lot of existing models that use the old pattern. Um, that's the good news. Only a few need to be changed. Yeah, it would be nice to to know whether Ari's converters. Uh, can do this as well. Um, let's see if we can do this in, in time for the consensus call. I've been working on some ideas for that also, so I can I can uh, I'd like to be like discuss that. Okay, so do, do you have slides for that? You want to do this now? No, I don't. Not yet, but. Um... I'll I'll prepare. I wanted to talk a little bit more with Adi on what what his his thoughts were, um, also. But that's sort of a side conversation we need to have. It has to do with the bigger problem. Just just to briefly illuminate it, the bigger problem here is not so much how you would translate it, but actually how you would map it to a a convention in lightweight MJM. Uh, and the question is whether um, whether you would as looks looks like a promising method would be to just map the composite data structures and actions and events and things like that to new object types in lightweight MJM. And that would that would actually be a pretty easy way to do it, but I'm not sure about the whole impact on the stack. From a modeling point of view, that looks really good. But um, you need to use links, object links, and you need to have a sort of a convention about how to do complex things. And that's really the bigger issue with lightweight MJM is how you do the more complex things that weren't really provided for in terms of you can't have an arbitrarily 
nested um, um, data structure, for example, as a as a resource in lightweight MJM. But you can have a an object that contains resources, and so if we can map to that pattern as a convention, that's really kind of what we need to work out. I think but there may be other questions also. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're right. I mean, the nested properties or the complex properties, uh, we should be able to do it that way. As well as, as how you as implement there's... an action that has multiple um, data values coming in and potentially going out and putting out the data. That would need to be yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah the, the, the actions work, I mean, a bit differently in, in, in line with them than, than, than properties. Luckily, because they're, the spec doesn't detail too much, I mean, we can design something that is consistent, I, I think. Um, but then when it comes to the properties, I think as long as we have enough hints on the SDF side that we know what maps where and how, I think we're good. But I think it's, yeah, that's something to do the final pressure test. Uh, well, let's work code. through some examples because I have some constructed examples that uh, for new types of things that I'm trying to do that, that I have some uh, some ideas or actually some examples them I worked through about how we could do that. And we can see if these generally map onto some some of the other things that might need to be done. You know, um, for example, do, do you really need to have light bulbs with all of the different color control affordances as part of, you know, the next thing also is sort of what's the, what are the use cases in lightweight M2M that are, do you want to be able to just convert any model? Um, and and that, 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 you know, some of the questions. Yeah, I, I think there's kind of three levels of, of questions here. One is that, okay, like, how would you, if you start from a live within the model, how, how would you do it that it maps nice tails everywhere? The second part would be um, what kind of style we choose for the consolidated models that they are easily mappable to live within them. And the third one, the hardest one, is probably ecosystem specific models. And some of those could even be a non goal. We don't even try to map all the ecosystem specific tweaks uh, to, to lie within them, but at least the consolidated models, uh, we should be able to map. So that's, it might be in that phase, we have to look in more detail, what exact structures can we use uh, for those, or if we need to um, somehow restrict the generic language uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to the consolidated models. Well, I, you know, in a past life, I mapped the Zigbee lighting models to lightweight M to M and it, it was, wasn't, that bad. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I'm sort of leveraging that work a little bit also, and the, not so much doing what I did, but the, the learning from that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, th th those seem to map quite well in general. The generic thinking is similar enough there. Yeah. I'm so as you say, if we can come up with the hints and the patterns in SDF that make it easy to, you know, the conventions even maybe around SDF that say, here's when you make an action, you have to, you should make it this way or have to make it this way so that it can be converted to these other things that need more and more heavy, heavy duty mapping uh, as opposed to just being able to sort of translate things easily. So when we have to do that mapping, make sure there are enough hints or at least enough conventions so that the hints can be sort of automatically sort of applied <laughs> as, as rules, whatever we need exactly. to do that. Exactly. Well, that, that, that points to something that we may yeah. want to start as a subactivity here, um, getting some, some documents, not in the sense of an internet draft or something, just a wiki page or something, um, that explain the conventions that, that the various ecosystems uh, have been using and are using for for doing the conversion, because that that would be extremely useful for new ecosystems coming in, seeing how, how did the other ecosystems solve the, the problems that they still have to solve. This would be a good time to mention that we're, we're looking at a formalism that we're calling mapping files or SDF mapping. That uh, that takes advantage of our use of JSON pointer to add and layer additional um, data schemas and things like that onto, and hints, 
And the other thing that I've been looking at, and we've talked about a little, and I have some some new examples for, is uh, inline extension points that you can do in SDF so that you can sort of customize a thing that makes it easy to uh, to do those mapping annotations while you're working on the file. I also want to mention so, that there is already a web page that uh, has some constructs uh, explained from Lightweight M2M and OCF. So there is already a start in a web page for that. So people want to contribute to that. That's fine. Can you send a pointer to the chat? I have to look it up. Thank you. So where are we with this now? Because it feels like even if we kind of close the issues, they are still of <laughs> they still need to be pressure tested or or, or worked or, uh, I think I or there is this... Yeah, I think that's yeah, where we are. But the, 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 because it also I think that there there are um I mean, this is not an a, this was not an ASDF discussion. It was a previous one DM discussion of okay, what SDF uh, what happens if we introduce a feature in SDF that not all ecosystems can support. And I think pressure test and, is a uh, good metaphor, as you said, because we have now something we can't think of any better changes to make. We have a thing that we think now is going to work, and we pressure tested it on several models. And I've I've done. Individually, I have a separate repo that I have a bunch of stuff in. Um, so I think what I think what we would do is close the issues and sort of have that as our our stable working draft, and and continue with the pressure test and try to get more um, more use of it now. And maybe that's our our sort of our rubric for how we do this, in general. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think that makes, it, makes sense what, what, what Michael uh, is, is proposing, kind of the implementation draft approach that, yes, here, here's what we think makes sense, let's implement it, let's pressure test it and, and see if we find some issues. I'm thinking maybe the only generic concern I, I have here is that if I would have to choose a method, I would rather choose the one that has less power. I, I know we can we can increase for in the further versions, increase the, how powerful the mechanism is. But it's of course hard to take the power away if we find something that you can express something very complicated that we don't have means to translate between the ecosystems. I don't have any obvious example of that in mind right now, but that's something I think we need to be in the look for uh, when we uh, design these, these mechanisms. I agree. We don't want to make SDF harder to use. <laughs> Just into you know, unless we really, you know, we really need to. Yeah, exactly. Like, like there's not 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 too many ways to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> yeah, one one way to shoot yourself in the foot here is to uh, try to encode all your policy in the mechanism. Um, and I think we we should uh, embrace mechanisms that that are general enough, not not overly general, but general enough. And if there are any policy things, like if you want uh, Lightweight m term to pick this up, please do this, uh, we can uh, describe these separately. That sounds like a solid policy. <laughs> no, I agree. I, 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 think that's a good, I think that's a good approach. A fair set of constraints uh, that we can all agree on, yeah. But uh, for the purposes of, of this here, um, uh, are we okay with moving forward uh, with this as the draft currently stands? No objections. So let, let's try to fly with this and see where, where it breaks and then resolve that. Uh, good. Okay, Karsten, please continue here. I'll move to next. Yeah, so um, one smaller point was the, that uh, SDF 1.0 is, is uh, pretty tars on, on the meaning of SDF ref. And uh, we have been using it both in, in the way that, that is appropriately de described um, in the, the current text, but also in a way where we use an SDF ref and st then start modifying the the piece of specification that, that has been referenced by SDF ref. 
and uh, section 4.4 of, of uh, the current uh, draft is uh, mute about whether you can even do that or, or if yes, what it means. Um, so uh, we have a few examples. They, they don't do much with it. Uh, so the, the examples add things like labels and, and default values and, and so on. Uh, that, that's uh, all. Obviously, if you reference a type, uh, you may want to give the the actual uh, field of a property a, a specific name. So if, if you have a um, RGB value type, you may want to call a, a field red or green or blue. So setting labels is, is uh, one obvious thing that, that you uh, may want to do, but uh, you already can do that by, by using the named data qualities uh, mechanism. So it, it's not strictly necessary to do that. Uh, but uh, when it comes to default values, there, there is currently no way uh, for doing this. And uh, maybe it would be nice to look at other examples and see wh whether we have to say anything more. And uh, when, when I started looking at um, examples, I found that uh, we don't have a way to say um, this thing is like that thing, but this particular restriction does not apply. Um, so it should be possible to remove a quality, for instance, by setting it to, to null uh, in, in the JSON that actually expresses the uh, quality. So that, that isn't covered yet. And if people agree that, that setting qualities to null is, is a general concept, which probably would then also uh, find its way into other aspects of SDF at, at some point, um, then we probably can, can plug this hole and uh, yeah, we still have to write text for section four, but I think this is a, a small matter of, of writing text and uh, there shouldn't be too many open issues coming up by writing that uh, text. Well, why don't really you do that? If you do it the other way around it, you can extend and you don't want to do a deletion. That's just rewriting okay. of the same problem, but then in an constructive way instead of a destructive way. Yeah, that, that is set, certainly one possible answer to this. I uh, have some experience also, and I, could, I can weigh in on in that. Uh, typically, I have a lot of use of this, by the way, but it's, it's pretty much always to, um, to set something or go to a higher level of restriction. So I, I think at this point, I would agree with Wouter that I'm, I'm comfortable in only allowing a higher level of restriction. And I, I think the reason for that is mainly that people have a little bit of an expectation that works, that this will work like inheritance. And having that rule helps with that a little bit. But also that um, I think though, strictly speaking, there's not a reason you couldn't override things and remove things because you're not you're not really having that expectation and there are some corner cases where if you didn't if you couldn't do that you'd just make another definition locally and and there were workarounds but going back to the use cases um there are there's a few more than just labeling uh, default values is a big one also minimum and maximum and also even if you want to explain something different with description and, and label um, that is very helpful, and I have I can show a bunch of examples for that. But I think that um, I'm convinced that at least the going to and and we can have conventions like in so in an SDF model we generally have the philosophy that the fewer constraints you build into the model the better because it makes it more reusable. But sometimes you want to put in default values in the in the model, and so but but it's less desirable to do things like set constant values in the model. So if you could put a default value in the model and use a constant in your SVF ref of it to override it, um, that would be uh, an example of being able to change something in the model without it being just being a high, higher level of restriction, basically. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a long way of saying, I, I think that 
that this is a, an important feature to have in 1.1. Um, and I think that defining it in a way that maybe only allows a higher level of, or, or a backward compatible, I, I hate to really put it that way because that's not, doesn't really guarantee that at all. But, you know, that, that kind of thinking around it, I think would be all right. Yeah, right now we don't have text that, that uh, would uh, enforce or even argue for following the Liskov uh, substitution principle, which is really the, the underlying theory here. Um, so um, elements of a derived type are always elements of the type you derive from. And that would need to be a convention because we, we cannot really formally um, specify what it means in JSON schema org for, for one type to be a subtype of another type. And as soon as you can override, uh, things become uh, interesting. So it's already possible to, to derive from a type that says maximum is 10 and, and set maximum to 20. And, and that would should be excluded by by this convention, if we really want to go for the Liskov substitution principle. Uh, well, I, I have a little bit of a hard time with that. So uh, a good example is always uh, an oven in, in various settings. So an industrial oven has way different temperature settings than an oven that you are using in your kitchen. And that that's something that is not uh, inherent of an oven in itself. Um, so you should refrain to put min and max uh, in the model. But if you're applying um, such an oven, uh, then you can say, well, this oven, this instance of this oven has this min and max value. So that there is a clear distinguishing thing that is clearly a limit of the model or a limit of the application. And it's up to the ecosystem in how to convey that difference. And I would say that we should model these differences. But, uh, well, if you just look at JSON, that there is a min and max in a schema, which are the absolute min and max that can occur. So that is the model, uh, the min of max of the model. That's not the min and the max of the instance that might be on the wire. So there, there are quite a lot of those nitty gritty details, uh, which makes it a little bit cumbersome. So your, your, well, I would expect that some things would be on the wire in some way or form, which is maybe out of scope if of the model itself, but it's something that can convey those kind of differences in the model and the actual implementation. Sounds like we generally agree. And, and what I've noticed is that um, we have this concept in SDF of declaration and definition, where definition is the model part and declaration is sort of where you use it. And um, minimum and maximum are a good example where you might want to set, say that a thing is limited to what will fit in an 8-bit integer. So zero to 255 unsigned, for example, but then in your model, you might want to further restrict it. And in my experience, creating those as properties that, as you say, carry, can be carried on the wire and inspected by applications is in general a better, a better way to do things. But that's not always the way people will want to do it. So we, we do have a little question of usage. But I think min and max are the one qual qualities that I would say are good candidates for an override that you might want to set in the in the declaration definition, and then override in the declaration to an application range. But but then again, you can also do that by by set, having additional properties that set those. When you say override, would it be okay if, in your point of view, to define RGB channel and then define an HDR channel that goes from zero to 1023? No, no. So a good okay. example is um, I define a, um, a motor speed RPM value from, from zero to 255 for low speed devices. I might have a, a specification that I'm writing that wants me to restrict it further from to zero to 50. 
and I might want to use JSON schema or minimum or sorry maximum in both of those cases, both in the definition where I say it's zero to 255, and then in the declaration where I say this this one use of this RPM for the wobble <laughs> for the wobble uh, motor is zero to 50, and it's slower than it doesn't go as fast as the rotating motor. But I want to use the same RPM. Um, you know, UPM actually ovulation, right? But um, doesn't really um, doesn't really have a clean way of doing that because JSON schema.org doesn't talk about values and say, well, it's okay to override if the value is smaller. That's that's a harder rule to enforce with schema uh, checking. Okay, so my, my summary would be that we agree that. Uh, there should be a convention that overriding is only used for subtyping. And um, so, so the, the newly created uh, type should be a subset uh, of, of the existing one. And of course, there are things like description where, where you cannot entirely apply this in a formal way, but uh, I think that that's okay because that's for humans anyway who can fill in the blanks. Um, but uh, given that, we don't need to set qualities to null. I would agree with that. I have not seen a use to remove anything, and it sounds like that's quite a departure from uh, the principle that you were describing earlier. It also, it feels risky, so I, I think we should stay away from it. Uh, it's, it's probably harder to define the define it sort of in a safe way. Then you have to make Good. a bunch of special uh, rules for corner cases, and let's just stay away from that whole area. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think we don't have an, an infinite amount of time, unfortunately. So uh, I think we are with that. Are we, Karsten? Do we have enough material to finish this section four four? Yeah, I, I volunteer to write a pull request uh, for that by, by tomorrow, the latest, and then we Perfect. can discuss it on the list. Perfect. Next slide. Oops. <laughs> the tough one. Yeah, so yeah. Th that that's really the, the one remaining issue. It, it comes in, in the form of uh, two GitHub um, issues, uh, but uh, they they really are about the the same problem, the same underlying requirement. Um, so when we describe data shapes, they often specify a selection of possible values, and uh, we can do this for single values, of course. We can do this for ranges. Um, and, and we have more complicated con constructs like arrays and so on, which then have number of items and so on. Uh, but uh, it, it's not currently possible to construct a type from more diverse uh, selections. And um, if we want to uh, model this like uh, JSON schema org does, uh, th there are two constructs there that, that are popular. Uh, one is enum which just allows you to uh, list a number of values that are possible. And I note that there is nothing in enum that, that requires them to be of the same type. There's also something called type in JSON schema.org. Uh, and there's also a construct called any of, uh, which allows uh, you to choose from a number of uh, schemas that can be arbitrarily uh, complex. So enum is, is for uh, putting multiple values into a selection, and any of is uh, put for putting multiple subtypes into a uh, selection. And uh, these are, are different in many ways, and they are also not quite um, sufficient. So next slide. So what we typically use these for um, is a, a number of named alternatives. Uh, so for instance, we might have something that, that has 
uh, five values in the enum, and uh, it's talking about animals, of course, and um, this particular enum can talk about ants, bees, cats, dogs, and elks. And th these are the, the five uh, cases. And the, the problem we really have with this is that there, there are nice strings that can be sent over the wire, uh, but nobody really knows what these strings mean. Uh, so it would be uh, nice if there was a way in the specification to actually put something there. Um, enum can also be used with, with other types, of course. So, for instance, with numbers and booleans. So you could have an enum that has and, b, three, and false, uh, and, and that would be perfect uh, JSON schema org. Um, what we have found is that we also have mixes of, of these. Um, so, for instance, uh, in, in an example that, that uh, um, Michael has is extracted out of, I think it was Bluetooth or was it Zigbee? I don't remember. Um, we have a number that normally means uh, something in, in a range of uh, values, but then we have two special values uh, that uh, mean something different than those numbers. And uh, one way to model this uh, would be to make an any of that has uh, either a number or one of the strings min and max in, in that particular um, example. I mean, th there are, of course, many ways of modeling that, uh, but that, that is an example for an any of uh, where something can, can be um, both one thing and somebody else that is actually structurally uh, different. So it's a little bit more of, of a bigger gun that is uh, being used to uh, address uh, this, uh, but it, it sometimes is necessary. And also, if you want to combine ranges, then, then any of is the, the only uh, tool you have. So if you have something that, that can go from 0 to 10 and, and from 100 to 110, um, that, that's the, the only way uh, to express this. That's Zigbee that has examples of both of those types of constructions. Right. And, and we haven't done a lot of work in, in integrating, integrating Zigbee models uh, yet. So I, I would expect that, that there are more of these um, in there. And um, yeah, so we have our uh, uh, Catch-22 problem here again, that we want to give Zigbee a stable specification so they can can put more models into the playground, but uh, we also want to use what they learned from uh, this uh, activity to define a stable specification. So that there is no no way to solve this problem. We, we just have to find some way of, of getting the work done. When we say Zigbee, we mean chip also now, because I have a chip model in SDF that looks pretty much, very much like the Zigbee models. And yep. it has similar, very all the same requirements. It's the same model, basically. Okay, next slide. Um, so my, my observation here would be that uh, the, the problem here uh, really is caused by reusing syntax from the, the data modeling word. So JSON schema org really has to uh, say something about uh, what's actually uh, going on on the wire. So it has to do to be um, very specific in some ways, but it also has the luxury of being very unspecific in another way because it doesn't have to tell you what it means. Um, and uh, th that's convenient. Um, it's convenient to use JSON schema org uh, because there are a few uh, inform pure information modeling languages around. And th these are often a little bit how shall I put it, um, too theoretical for what, what we are trying to do here. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, reusing data modeling concepts for information modeling also is a dangerous thing because it can move the mindset of the specifier to what really should be protocol bindings. So it takes takes your focus off the question, what, what is it really that we are modeling here, uh, to how can I represent this in, in uh, JSON or CBO or uh, lightweight M2M TLVs or whatever my my uh, representation uh, language, uh, my representation format is at the moment. 
So what we have been doing is we, we have been defining additional qualities. And qualities, again, are those members of specification JSON objects, not members of objects that are being interchanged, but members of the specification JSON objects um, to, to capture some of those uh, aspects. For instance, units is one thing that, that um, is done in SDF. And the question really is, is, is this another place where, where SDF uh, needs to, to act, needs to define its own thing? Uh, next slide. And one answer is yes. And that is uh, pull request number eight. Um, so uh, the, the idea is uh, not to distinguish between uh, single values and, and value ranges and, and uh, mixing types and so on, and have a single new keyword SDF choice, uh, which can use the, the named data qualities mechanism that we already have uh, for giving these choices names and for including some uh, form of, of uh, uh, more, more precise data model if, if that is what we actually need. So if we have a choice between ants, bees, and cats, uh, then we might have uh, human language um, descriptions. Uh, what is an ant, and, and what is a bee, and what is a cat? Uh, but we also might have uh, some uh, much more precise uh, things in there, like, like ontology references. So that there is a ontology for wildlife objects, WO. And uh, that ontology could be used here to define exactly what an ant is. Um, so th that's probably not just for wildlife, but my, my examples here happen to be wildlife examples. Um, so we could uh, uh, reference a particular unit or, or measurement principle or the difference between indoors and outdoors and so on. These are all things that, that are usually somehow encoded in, in labels like ant, bee, and cat, but that really uh, might require more uh, specific, 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 you know what I mean, um, in a, a data model. Um, so let's go to the next slide. And this is uh, just the, the other example that, that would need an any of. Uh, because uh, uh, in addition to const, to, to consts, which could be done by an enum, a const really essentially is an enum with a single uh, uh, element in, in uh, JSON schema org. Um, th there is uh, one range in here that goes from 1 to 254, and we want to put all these things into a, a choice. And th the good thing is that we actually can give them uh, names and could even actually add semantic tags in there. I haven't done that uh, here that explain what, what these choices actually mean. Uh, because in, in the Zigbee example that, that Michael had, these numbers mean something very different uh, from the preset values. So we would have a, a single uh, mechanism uh, called SDF choice, and that could be, um, next slide, uh, could be um, used to um, describe both enum and any of, of JSON schema org. Um, and uh, it would give us full data shaping capability in, in either case. It would give us a discriminated union structure. Any of is, is a, a anonymous type union, and we have all kinds of problems with anonymous type units, uh, type unions in, in a lot of uh, places. Uh, so I think a discriminated union is, is the wider, uh, the, the, the more wise uh, choice here. And um, yeah, so we can use it as a data value. We can discriminate between subtypes that even might be overlapping for uh, uh, some reasons. So you might have a, a choice between 8-bit uh, uh, RGB and an HDR RGB, and then you can say in the model you can have both and both are numbers and uh, the, these numbers actually overlap but uh, that, that's something that you have to handle in your uh, binding for instance because your binding only actually supports the one or the other. Uh, next slide. So 
um, that loses uh, the the commonality with uh, JSON schema org. So the, there have been some proposals to actually put the JSON schema org stuff in there and then have a separate uh, quality that augments the JSON schema org stuff with uh, things that cannot be expressed uh, in, in JSON schema org. So in this specific example that I took out of, I don't remember, was it GitHub or an email to the list? I don't know. Um, if you uh, replace all the green stuff by SDF choice, you still have the same uh, semantics. So th it's just redundancy that gets uh, added uh, to uh, the specification. Uh, next slide. Um, one problem we, we have is uh, the term choice. Uh, there, there are many uh, terms in the English language for for a set of alternatives that you select one alternative from. Uh, and uh, some of them are on this slide. There are probably other ones uh, as well. Um, the, the problem with the English language is that, that the term always is used both for the set and for the one thing that actually is selected. Um, so you make a selection from a selection or you make a choice from a choice. And, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's a problem of the English language. Um, so th there's probably no way to get rid of that uh, problem. We just have to define things and, and use uh, words, uh, chosen word, choice words. Uh, um, I should not say choice words because that means something different in English. Uh, chosen words that, that have the semantics that we want them to have. So with that bike shed out of the way, let, let's go to the SDF choice words. Yes, uh, let's go to the uh, next slide. Uh, that was one too many. Yes, 22. So the, the question really is how important is it that the, the SDF specification mimics JSON schema org here? And I'm not, Asking that as a general question, I think as a general approach, we have agreed uh, when in doubt, use use JSON schema org because that's there and, and people know that and there are tools out there and so on. Um, but how, how important is mimicking JSON schema org here? And the, the pro, of course, is that people who don't know SDF will recognize that, that enum on, on, the, uh, on slide 20 and uh, uh, recognize uh, th th there, there, there is some kind of choice that looks like the choice that um, uh, JSON schema org expresses using the keyword enum, and then they know what's going on. Um, the disadvantages are uh, lots of noise, like the blue stuff or green stuff uh, on, on the previous slide, and actually more work for converter writers who have to uh, convert something that, that's a relatively straightforward structure, the choice structure, into something that, that is weirdly split between a JSON schema org compatible subpart and an extension subpart. And even worse, they have to have code uh, for handling potential contradictions or conflicts. So if, if uh, the uh, enum says on off and uh, the, the uh, SDF anything says powered, unpowered, or what, whatever alternatives there are, then, then this uh, bug needs to be detected and, and you need to have some code to handle that and so on. So it's not without costs to, to put some, some uh, uh, structure in there that, that is more uh, complex than needed. And with that, I would be interested to hear discussion of... Uh, the number two, number five issue. Before we start that, can um, uh, as a time check issue, we have 24 minutes left of this meeting. Uh, I'd like us to give us at least 15 minutes to discuss the, discuss the web of things at the end. Uh, so uh, I think we need to close this within the coming nine minutes or we need to postpone it somehow or, or have some way forward. I'd rather get a decision now so we can continue. I have a little, a yeah. little background. 
also. So I, I, I guess I need about like just a couple of minutes to go through sort of explain what I've done so far on this, but not too much time. I think we could do it today. I mean, I would prefer to have a decision, of course, but we have discussed this many, many times, and, and we need to get some kind of conclusion. Yeah, and we need so, to have a solution to get the conclusion. I really don't understand why the, the cons are being written here as cons. You can also see that as a prey. So, uh, I, frankly, I don't know why we are doing something new for just annotating integers because if you are if you have an enum of strings and that enum value is not um yeah uh conveying what it should should explain then you only need a description uh only you know, after last meeting and the intro meetings of last week uh, i heard something about a label which is nothing more than just a name or an identifier. This is just a, another layer of adding a description like UPMP had long descriptions and short descriptions, etc. So I, I don't even know what the problem is by not using enums and if the enum value um, is not descriptive enough that you can't add somewhere else a longer description what you might want to use or might not want to use. So I tried the add somewhere else suggestion that you made at the meeting. And first, I think that, that Karsten provided a really good example of something that isn't just a label and it isn't just text. It's a semantic connector. I can show a few more things that you might want to do, like remapping to other values and providing other other schema extensions for those points. But I think Carson's example already is something that we need to do, which is to provide semantic connectors, which is what I call semantic anchor for these. So I, I took your suggestion from last week and said, OK, what if we had just a JSON schema.org enum with strings? And we map them elsewhere. And so looked at mapping files and the things that we were talking about with mapping files and everything just sort of converged on saying, well, you know, really what would be handy is if we could say, if you just need something like a set of values, you can use JSON schema org enum. If you want something that represents, you know, something that's more than just a set of integer values or string values that even already are kind of constrained for the model, but I'll, I'll admit there are places where you just want to do that. Um, then you they use the SDF any or SDF union or SDF choice or whatever we decide to call it. And it looks it looks decent as an annotation. If you're going to have that annotation somewhere else, it's just harder to manage. So, you know, putting it in line um, seems to make a lot of sense. So that's the sort of the background of how I arrived at this idea. Like Karsten says, you could always do something different. But the idea is that if you just need a, an enum, you can just put in an enum. If you need the, the more extensive range selections and things like that, you can use SDF union and or SDF any. And but we were we were talk, talking about replacing an enum by something else. Now, mm -hmm. what you want to do with the enum is getting way more context inside of such a value. And then you're talking a little bit of a different thing. If yeah, it's just a I description what, or not, then that's that's I, I think yeah, here, we, yeah, that that example one one slide bef before or below that one that one min range is some something completely different or the present preset preset value that is certainly a range which you don't do with an with uh with an enum. Because you have other constructs. That's, that's, that's right. So that's, that's so, why so that's, this, this this is this is not the same thing anymore. So I'm 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 now biased by, well, what are we trying to achieve here? If we want to keep it simple, just use an enum with an extension to write down what the description is. And if we yeah, want to do something more nice. like what you want to do with the preset value, then we need to have a lot more discussion on what we want to model there. Because this is now a little bit of, uh, is, yeah, strangely done. 
because frankly for the min range a constant zero i like to say what the zero means and not what what the min range means that it is zero because that's, that's what, what you want to does. convey the, in the model the, the, the pattern here does convey the meaning of the different um, elements in the union and discriminated union is a really good way to describe it that the whole reason for having each element have its own schema is so you can add those descriptions and add those pointers and connectors and make a JSON pointer to it. And then, you know, even the ability to make a JSON pointer to it is needed to add additional uh, uh, additional qualities elsewhere. And using an enum, you can't really do that. You have to know the position of the element. And you had suggested we extend JSON pointer to allow you to put in the string name of the enum element as the last element in the pointer. That, that's not JSON pointer. That's an extension that, that is non-standard that we would have to build in as part of SDF. And if you do that, you do get a pointer and you do have all these other abilities. But at the end of the day, the different solutions I looked at, and I, they're, in the, they're in the email, they don't look a lot different than SDF any, really. Well, I don't like SDF any Anyway, so that's 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 the other thing. Any is such a, a nasty thing to work out with code that you have to make case statements or uh, uh, if if then else statements, which is not funny to do if you want to write code for that uh, automatically. So that's something that you want to avoid in models. And uh, here it's just an enum and uh, the default is true and default is off, uh, uh, false. With, with, with this, this, I don't even know what, what, what it means. The schema where the default means the default value. It's, it's a JSON schema that's described in our SDF schema, what, what that means. That's unending. Oh, certainly the enum values, but, but normally if you do these kind of things in a programming language that everybody knows, if you use that in your code base, then that is being used for a value. And then you're translating that by means of a, a translation table to true and false. Yeah, that's what this is doing because it gives you the ability to remap those and change that to zero and one or some other JSON JSON values, if you want, or Seabor values, or however you do your your enums. You know that's the whole idea of having the model be an abstraction, and then allowing you to these these extension points, which is here the JSON pointer where you can do in the mapping. You can say, well, I want to use zero and one. The default's true and false. So if I just want to pick up the default and use it in my JSON, I can do that. But I can also be fancier and map it to my ecosystem's compact integer values or or you know sub sub bit fields or whatever I need to do. And we have, you know, the Bluetooth uses the sub bit fields, right? So that's really what the point is here. This SDF any, and by the way, it is exactly telling you to make a case statement. And and that's we need to model that. That's part of the problem space. Well, the, the way that I'm using enums right now in the modeling that I it's just a list of possible values. There is no case statements whatsoever. That's right. That's right. And that's why I'm saying uh, we so, should have so the you're, 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 So, so where, where I wanted to use enums, you're using a completely different construct now. So with a diff different function even, at least for, for the models that I'm creating with enums. I, I agree there are two end up to end code target environment sort of implementations. If you have a straight enum, the value selection doesn't need a case statement. You can do all kinds of other mapping stuff with it. If you have a generalized thing like STF any, STF union, STF choice, I don't care what it's named, that's a case statement or that's a different kind of code. I, I agree with that. And so we're not- Can, can, we, you. can we then get- to a conclusion that if if you just do a regular enumeration of values, that you that we just use the standard JSON stuff, at least that we don't deprecate it. Uh, I think we definitely need more time to 
talk about what kind of modeling you want to do with SDF any. For me, it's still not clear in what you want to do. And uh, may I uh, interrupt here? So um, I will share you a, a GitHub issue which is coming from the Web of Things Sing description, and we have almost the same discussion there. So uh, we are also not that happy with the enumeration as it is. So uh, we also have the sil uh, simple adapted by uh, from Jason Schema. Okay, uh, uh, can I can I just address Wouter's question first? Um, I think that it'd be useful to look at uh, some broader discussion, but I I don't want to let go of the the moment right yet. And and so Wouter, I think that. There may be that what you say may be may make sense and that we allow JSON schema org enum where you just want a simple selection of values. And we allow and we provide this other pattern for the other examples that I definitely have many of that I am going to need for this. So if we can so agree can on I, can I argue oh, against that? Uh, because yeah. putting in something that, that just happens to encode the simplest case. Uh, provides a, a, a negative incentive for mm. actually adding the information that is needed, the descriptions and the semantic tags. So that, that should be something we encourage and don't get in the way of. Well, let me say that I have a very simple resource which is also translated to SDF. That is just an enumeration, enumerated list of battery uh, materials. Uh, that's a very straightforward list with uh, chemical names. You don't want to do anything else with SDF any. So uh, I would say that already justifies that you just use something like uh, the standard enum. I think yes, that's a great that's example. Of an edge to case. That's maybe an edge case. Uh, I don't argue that there might be some uses of SDF any. Give you that. But we are far from boiling that one down just yet. Your best, your uh, battery chemical. Yeah, so I, I think we are, we are. Yeah, not, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Final comment, Michael. And then I know I think we need to cut the discussion here because we're not well, really getting it's, anywhere. It's circular. I don't. I don't need to. Yeah. Go back again. No. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, unfortunately, I, it seems like we are not really getting any. Uh, I mean, we have two. We have a couple of different solution families uh, or with various aspects not really even uh, I mean, maybe with two solutions but they're different in a way and we don't really seem to get to a consensus here um, the question is of course that this really was one of those things that we wanted to have in sdf11 and unfortunately we have been discussing this problem for quite some time um, and i'm not really so either we either we uh, uh, well, I tell you, my solution is to, to go forth the language and make a variant that I can use in Zigbee if we can't get the patterns in. So I can go do that, and we can keep we can keep this simple. But I have to have something. Yeah, I can but use. That, that's like an anti-solution, right? I, I agree. I mean, this. We, we, well, I think every, we need every to, time uh, someone wants to exclude something, it's an anti-solution. So the, the we have a very focused discussion right now. With 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 some proposals to exclude things, and I think we can we need to close off this very discussion, right? I think that yeah, we, we have to generalize need to, it again because <laughs> what we need to understand is what things can you not live with, not what you want, but what things can you are unacceptable to each party. Yeah, thanks. That's kind of what I was getting to. Yeah. Well, I don't want that uh, the standard JSON enumeration gets deprecated, and that's what's being hinted at. I'm using that quite extensively, and um, that's fine. I don't need, per definition, an extension scheme. I think that would be nice. And frankly, I don't have a, a need for SDF data or SDF any here as, as being here, but I don't uh, exclude it and that it might be useful in the future. But I argue that we don't know the ins and outs of SDF any just yet. Because I saw something new 
uh, on these slides uh, while we have discussed this last week. Put, please point that out. What's new? Well, this, this slide is not new, but the slide from Karsten was with uh, a range uh, indicator in yeah. present value. That was completely new for me. That's 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 consistent with all the other uses that we have. This is just an application. This is just what I wanted to name something and how I wanted to use it. This isn't a new thing. This is just another way. Yeah, of using the it. value preset value minimum and maximum. Yes, that is new for me. No, this is exactly the same pattern I've been showing you in the Zigbee model that has the uh, the startup values for the light bulb of being minimum or maximum or preset. It's no different. It just names the. It's slightly, slightly this, semantic. This sy is syntactically something completely different than I was used to uh, in how I have to handle these kind of things. So this is not the same thing. So I don't even know what these kind of things are. These For me, it's a number. It can be a min range. It can be a max range. It can be a Pres uh, pre preset value and the preset value is again a range. This this is for me. This is uh, I don't know how to apply any of this, and I like to understand what I'm getting into. So your example with SDF any is way more concise and way more precise in what it can do. But if you're starting to talk that you can reuse some of this stuff with additional level and, and overloading, then I'm getting into a position that I don't know where I'm getting into. So would a solution based on this kind of be acceptable to you, Arthur? And I know this is sort of back, I mean, this might not be the most beautiful solution or so on, but would this be acceptable? Uh, so as it now? is written here with Enum, well, the enum has to have also uh, one level higher, uh, so that you can say that the enum values of are of a specific type. And now you can uh, mix and match enums with numbers, integers, uh, strings, which you definitely don't want to encourage. But that's already possible in JSON schema org. Well, we already you, you, mentioned you, many, many times ago uh, that that would be a complete violation in how you want to design uh, a math, uh, uh, enumeration. You should not mix and match different types. You have a specific policy in mind that I think is, is quite defendable. Um, but you somehow confuse this policy with uh, one potential way of expressing that policy in syntax. And that, that's where you completely lose me. Yeah, now you now I, I'm lost you again. So uh, yeah, so, yeah. so, so, so if, if yeah. this is being used uh, to describe things, then uh, I don't uh, disagree with any SDF any. I'm, I'm just saying that a switch state should still have an additional type here saying it's a, it is. A string or uh, an or a number or an integer because that's that's if you're looking at JSON that's an additional uh, qualifier to say if what you're trying to convey is correct. So an enum uh, saying the switch state switch state is type of number and saying in enums with uh, this in this case is in a, a list of strings. That's an invalid JSON syntax because uh, you can't say it's something like uh, like an integer and then putting uh, string values in there. So it, it's way better defined that you say, okay, so we have an additional type here on switch state that that would suffice what I'm trying to convey. Yeah, my example on slide 18 had that uh, I forgot to put it in, in the example on slide 17. So I, I agree that it's good to be able to uh, put uh, additional constraints there together with the choice. Okay. So this has type number in there. So uh, we really need to wrap this up now because we still have another point to talk about. And uh, we will be running over time. 
I hope not too much. Um, so what is the, I mean, for SDF 1.1, what is the acceptable bit that we can stick in the specification? Uh, can you uh, go to slide 23? So my plan for, for getting uh, SDF 1.1 out uh, this year was uh, to, to write this text for number seven that we talked about, agree on solutions for two and five, write the pull request or start from the pull request we already have and uh, publish uh, Dash 02 this week, uh, do a last call of that in the working group and publish a Dash 03 based on the last call results. And, and this interesting discussion here is, is uh, uh, slowing us down from that plan. So I think yes. it would be important for people to understand that this is the case. Well, yes, we I mean, go it, into, it, it, uh, to this meeting with the unified solution. So this was to be expected. But the question is, I mean, we have, we have been fighting over this for months now. And we haven't really, we had, there has been a lot of different solutions trying to work around various aspects of this, but okay. there still, still seems to be no beautiful. Let me just try to, try to try to hit the target here. Um, what if we do, what if we meet Wilder's need and not deprecate JSON schema org enum and, but not say a lot about how that's used or how it's not used, right? And we also meet my requirement can allow an STF any, and not really say a lot how about how it might be used with or without an enum. And let's let's kick that down to the next stage. I can live with that. I tried to put this into number eight. Thank you. Good. Let's let's go with that then. Um, I hope that works out. Uh... I will be struggling with this for the rest of next year as well. So, is that acceptable? Are there are no objections. It, it is to me. Um, yeah, <laughs> good, good. So, to our Web of Things friends, uh, I'm apologizing here uh, for running over time. As you saw, this discussion has been a bit uh, intense. Um, uh, if people have a couple more minutes, it would be really nice to have uh, both a presentation from Sebastian and some discussion with you guys. Can people stay around for 10 minutes more, perhaps? Yes, I certainly can. Great, thank you. Yeah. Sebastian and Cass, that works for you as well? Yes. I don't have so much time. Um... So, um, I don't know, Cass, how long time do you have? I'm okay. So, Sebastian, please use all the time for you. Um, well, um, so um, it, it was quite interesting to hear about your discussion about this uh, choice thing. Um, as I already shared on WebEx, there is already a similar discussion going on 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 GitHub in the thing description uh, repository. And um, we have a little bit uh, advantage that we have uh, JSON LD uh, around so that there's um, maybe also another um, uh, proposal there which we can rely on. But I think this is actually also a topic where we can uh, work together on. And, um, and uh, my personal opinion is we should stick as close as possible to existing approaches which are there. I know there are many uh, stuff which is maybe not that perfect, which we like to have, yeah, like the enum and JSON schema. But um, but uh, what I um, see as a kind of danger is if you say, okay, uh, enum, it's maybe not perfect for us, we don't use it and we take another way then you fall or will go in a direction which maybe makes more complicated to to compare other approaches or to combine other approaches other models etc and i think json schema creates a good uh, basis for data modeling and this is actually a good point where we can meet each other right so uh, you're using a lot of uh, JSON schema paradigm there, to think description using a lot of JSON schema paradigm there. 
And I think this is something where we can meet us, right? And if you go a different direction with uh, different concepts, then it makes more complicated. Yeah. And I think this is a, what my personal opinion would be that we are, uh, should uh, avoid uh, as much as possible. Yeah. Um, because we have not so much time, maybe I will only show you one project, uh, which taking care of. Sure? Yes. Uh, Give me a second. Yeah. Okay. So can you see my screen? Yes. So um, what I like to show you is that we have well, one of the goal of the next uh, or of the current charter which you're working on is also to have this thing model concept in the um, former version of or of the 1.0 version of the thing description. We had already this concept there. There was a different name for it, that it's called thing description template. However, we decided to rename it to the thing model concept, right? And our goal is to actually, um, yeah, to have actually a kind of, uh, I would say, a thing description without any communication meta there, data there, right? So the thing model is a more abstract way to describe uh, a thing and uh, gives you the opportunity to define classes of uh, uh, real devices and thing, yeah? And there are actually two purposes of this uh, approach. So one is a kind of self-contained description to say, okay, I just want to describe the, the, the model of the thing and which can be used for digital twin use cases and cloud use cases for onboarding, et cetera. And the other use case is to use the thing model as a template for a thing description creation. Yeah, that you say, okay, you have all the data in there and also some uh, already basic direction regarding the communication metadata there. Um, and you can use this for creating a uh, thing description. So this is the major pur purpose. And yeah, and what we are currently evaluate is what kind of models are out there. And for example, we have uh, models like uh, from Oracle Cloud. So Michael Lagelli, I think is also in the, in the call which having also a, a thing model or device model, it's called there. Um, we have also, a, or we're currently evaluating the Eclipse Water model, um, which uh, we also uh, like to, to consider here, and also the SDF. And the SDF is another approach which we are, think can we are simple also describe or use the, uh, the, the, the definitions there which are provided there to have also this as a thing model representation. And I would like to share you, sorry, this, this project here. Uh, it's quite fresh and it's a student of mine. He just started uh, its thesis. And I ask him, hey, uh, just uh, write us a nice tool to convert SDF definition to thing models. So um, I would like to share with you this project uh, that you maybe can also play around with that. And what you just have to do, you have to just to point your SDF definitions uh, uh, in, in um, somewhere. You can then simply point to, to the location. And then it's simple transforming this to to uh, to a thing model representation, and here you see the list what is supported so far. So uh, my student also checked this SDF choice already, but uh, it's as you can see is to do. And as I have here today, you are currently still discuss discussing on that. But um, yeah, you will find out uh, the SDF model is very close to the thing model and it's very easy to transform all the information in the thing model concept. And yeah, and the tool here will help you for doing so. 
Yeah. Um, I will share you this link here in the WebEx chat so that you can have a look on that. Oh. Here we go. And yeah, um, just be aware this uh, student has just started. He released the first version, so maybe it's, everything is not perfect yet. But um, it's a nice tool, I think, where you can play around with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it actually. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, do you have further questions? Thank you. Very interesting. Uh, I guess we don't have time for the deeper technical stuff, but this sounds really cool. So, uh, uh, when will this uh, project be be uh, done, so to speak? Your your students' project is this all? Uh, he just started, yeah. so uh, I think. Um, okay. Uh, you, typical thesis takes six months, yeah. So, and I think in all the time he will working on that and optimize that. And of course, we will also observe what kind of changes in the SDF uh, will uh, going on. Then we are, will update that. But um, our goal is actually to be really aligned what is uh, uh, with our thing model approach, and we're doing the same also for for the Oracle model and for the Eclipse uh, model. So that we have a very uh, cool model approach uh, here, where we can cover all the existing models out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I can also invite yeah. you to to uh, to join one of this uh, GitHub um, discussions. So we have the SDF discussion here as well. So Michael Costa mainly is involved in that. So I think it's mainly here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm uh, looking at the, uh, the bigger issue of workflow and how SDF models can, how we can use uh, web of things as to apply protocol bindings and data schemas and all that to the abstract models that we have. And so any, this is really great to have a consumer of SDF models that's sort of doing this, this remapping. Bastion, yeah. will you come back and show it to us in, uh, uh, in the spring? Yeah, we can do that. So uh, this is a, a issue which taking care of the Oracle device model. So Michael Legelli is uh, driving this mainly, and and we have also the same for the uh, uh, Eclipse Water, which uh, Bosch is mainly driving this. Um, yeah, right here it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so uh, this is just you to make you aware of that and um, right and uh, it would be cool always to exchange with you and uh, and I shared you the link which we had the actually almost the same discussion what you have with this uh, choice thing. So and the most problematic thing is that the JSON schema has not a good way to giving more semantics and enumeration right. And maybe this is also a question where we maybe have to go to the JSON schema guys and talk about that, that situation and maybe uh, to improve that in the future version of JSON schema that they make some more opportunities with iteration there, which we can adapt in the, in the future version of uh, thing description or in SDF. Yeah. If they give us an enumeration of named schemas, then we're, we're there, <laughs> we're aligned. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So maybe we shouldn't call it SDF choice so they can pick it up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This was great and very interesting stuff. So, so, um, uh, looks good. And it's really interesting to hear that you are sort of obviously more. <laughs> Uh, deriving from different uh, modeling languages, and that seems to work. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I guess it's, it's really good. If, of course, if you if you or your student comes up with interesting problems during your development, it's good to know about them so we can address them in SDF. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or, or I mean that that includes like uh, if the specification is not clear and so on. So uh, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, you need to drop for. So yeah, good. Um, 
so that was that. And then we had actually the final point here for the last minutes or, or so was about uh, cooperation. Uh, now we've seen that whoever thinks uh, is doing some interesting and relevant stuff. Uh, we talked a bit, I had a mail discussion with, with uh, Kaz and others on, on, on collaboration here. So, um, uh, Kaz, maybe I should leave it to you and sort of so you, know, what just, you are thinking about. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, how to proceed uh, with the further collaboration. So, cre establishing uh, a formal reason is one option. And actually, as you might know, IETF as an organization and the W3C as an organization have, uh, they already have uh, an official reason. So we can simply add uh, one line to the, the general reason about WT and ASDF, for example, and uh, continue the liaison discussion on the mailing list and uh, this kind of telephone call as well. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I don't have anything against the formulation. I, however, it seems like maybe I don't I don't really know how 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 much we really need it uh, as long as we kind of <laughs> collaborate and there is no uh, conflict of of um, and there as long as there is little friction. Um, uh, <clears throat> but um, I mean I, I think it's it's, it's yeah. Yeah, please know that uh, W3C has two levels of uh, liaison. One is uh, official collaborative uh, work for standardization spec generation itself. And uh, another mm -hmm. level is a uh, more rough one and uh, simply registering uh, target group name on this web page. And my suggestion is the latter. Yeah. yeah anyway, in continue the discussion on the mailing list or yeah, somewhere. Yeah, no. uh, maybe that's the best thing to do. So we can have it in in um, uh, because I mean, uh, presumably our our interest here is is reasonably aligned and and we don't we can sort of agree and and, and cooperate between maybe without too much uh, problems. Uh, yeah. But absolutely, I mean, we can we can do what is needed to the formality is right um yeah but but please bring it to the mailing list mm. uh, and, and feel free to to use that for that yeah thank you very good much. Any, yeah any other comments from anyone on the web of things topic first on any other topic then uh, if not Thank you very much for going beyond duty and staying on 15 more minutes for this call. Uh, uh, I think it's good that we actually did manage to get the solution, even if it's an ugly solution for um, uh, two and five, but uh, at least we have something to work with. Um, and uh, let's hope that we can have a new draft in, in the not too far future that incorporates that, that would be really good. And we can move on with adoption. Um, with that, any final words from anyone? We will post the minutes and all the uh, notes and stuff as soon as, well, we are, we are done with them and so on. Any questions? Everybody's falling asleep. Good. Thank you very much, all. Um, this was a uh, 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 <laughs> productive meeting. We did manage to get the, get the resolutions, uh, so that was good. Mm -hmm. so thank you, um, and also uh, we will let's continue on the Web of Things discussion uh, on the mailing list and, and how to bring that forward. I think we had a substantial input from that viewpoint as well, so that was very much appreciated. Thank, thank you, you all. Much. Have a thank great you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.
Thank you.